Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Olga St. Pierre, and I am a realtor in our community, as well as a senior living specialist with Keller Williams Real Estate. I wanted to welcome you to today's workshop where we are discussing uh, aging in place. Uh, this is one of the workshops in our senior series. And the goal for today's workshop is to help you if you are planning this for yourselves or you are thinking about helping your family and your loved ones to try and make plans where to retire and spend their golden years, right? So just a little bit about our team. We are have been focusing on working with our clients in New Jersey and Pennsylvania for the last 11 going on 12 years. Our team's mission is to help anyone with the budget and planning uh, becoming a homeowner. And then once you become homeowners, we are here to help you and the community to be sustainable and responsible homeowners. And our goal is uh, to be resources in the community and help you understand what is relevant and what's important right here in our community. You know, the goal is to take what we hear on the news and social media and find out what is the reality and how does that relate and affect you right here in our local community. We can help you, your family and friends move anywhere in the United States and Canada. It is a big part of what we do because we want to make sure that if you are going to decide and retire somewhere where there is no snow, Florida or other states, we wanna make sure that your move is as smooth as possible. Also, please consider us your virtual Yellow Pages. We have a very extensive concert service and our goal is to help you and be your one-stop resource for any information that you may need, whether it's senior services, assistants, contractors, whatever, and whoever you're looking for, any professionals, feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help you and make uh, responsible and reputable recommendations. So let's jump right in. And here's the game plan for today. What we're gonna talk about is why considering uh, staying in your own home when you retire. Some of the questions that you need to ask yourself, making plans, financial considerations, and what's next. And I'm also very excited to have uh, one of our community resource, resources here with us to talk about if you do need help when you are retired and you're spending your golden years at home, how can you get help at home? And what are some of the questions and considerations that you need to make when you're working with an agency like that? So I'm very excited. So let's jump right in. Um, ARP surveys told us that about 70%, 76% of Americans the age of 50 and older state that they want to remain at home throughout the golden years. And I, being in the field all the time and working with senior clients here all the time, they, they always tell us, you know, this is what's most comfortable. We don't really want to go anywhere. This is the home where we spend and raise our family. This is what we want to do. All right. And what my goal here is for today is to help you understand that if this is something that you want to do, my intent and the message that I'm encouraging you to take from today's workshop is that you have to plan for staying at your home far in advance versus something that you might be planning today for taking effect tomorrow. And uh, unfortunately, I see this more often or not where these plans are being made in crisis mode where someone uh, has to stay. There are some things that have to be done to the home or unfortunately, even if there are a lot of the ones may want to stay at home, it's not possible because they didn't plan ahead and the home is no longer a safe place for them. So I think one of the messages that I encourage you to take with you today is that it is never too early to plan for something like that because it takes time for this planning. So the truth about staying in your home, this is what I hear all the time. So I'm kind of encouraging you to give this some thought as to your own situation. If you are making plans, I'm a big believer of using a notebook. Um, if you are thinking about making plans, I encourage you to grab a notebook and, and ask some of these questions yourself and write down your answers. Also write down your concerns, your fears, your desires, so that way you don't forget to pose these questions potentially to professionals or your loved ones, and also make sure that you answer them yourself as well. My current home is going to be the best place for me to live in my post-retirement years. Uh, my answer to that is it's an ideal home. And, you know, our 
our desired home and our perfect home does evolve over the years, right? Because it's one thing that we desire to have something large when we were raising our family. But right now, having a second story and climbing the stairs up and down and having laundry in the basement may not be the best thing for you. So the ideal home should be the one that provides you more freedom. It's convenient. It's better care and less worry. All right. My current home is my best option to continue having an active social life and for me to stay connected with friends. That is absolutely true, but you also have to consider that a lot of your friends may be moving out of their homes because that is what they feel is the best in their situation. So if you want to stay, you may be still alienated in your home because your friends still need to go. So just some food for thought. It's less expensive and more financially secure for me to stay in my current home. I understand that. And the biggest question we always say is, well, yes, your mortgage is paid off. However, you have to, again, use your notebook and figure out what your monthly expenses are to maintain your home, right? And what is your lifestyle right now, right? Because, I, you know, when you are older and your health may not be as good as in your 30s and 40s, your situation can change overnight. That's one. And two, think about your home from the point of view uh, that it ages as you do as well which means that major components of your home that require costly repairs and replacements, such as roof, your heating and air conditioning, your windows, your siding, are those things that are going to be nearing the end of their life and you're gonna to have to do those repairs, right? And they are expensive investments into your home. So it may be something to kind of weigh in and we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit more often. It would be easy to get any care I need at your home. Well, care at home can be difficult, it can be costly, and you also have to remember that it takes a group of dedicated professionals to help you plan your care at home. It's not just calling one person and that person is doing everything. So we'll talk, and I think that is one of the questions that I want to ask Charlene on how to plan for that care better at home. So that's why she's here joining us. Number one, most important question that I'm going to ask you today besides uh, finding out and starting to make plans early is, is your home safe? That is the most important thing, right? Because um, number one, leading cause of death for seniors over the age of 65 is falling, right? A lot of the time somebody falls, they break something major, they have to go into the hospital and then they end up into in the rehab. And then you never know how things are going to heal and how they're going to progress. It is absolutely critical that you do a home safety assessment to determine what modifications are needed for your home to make sure that we have safety items addressed, right? Uh, and we actually start off from outside and we tackle every floor in your home. Important technology. Do you have exterior cameras to make sure that you, your safety is in priority? Do you have Alexa or Google Home security system? These are all of the things that we look at it's a bigger picture to make sure that your home is your safe haven. And I have some pictures here for you in this workbook, which you will get a copy of, just to give you an idea, right? How is your, is your kitchen appropriately set up? Do you have a lot of steps that you have to take it, to get to your home as well as in your own home, right? So, so these are some of the things to think about. Also, what we also talk about is besides making modifications with a contractor for your home, what about furniture? Do you have a lot of furniture? Do we need to declutter? Do we need to make more space in your hallways? Because if you end up in a wheelchair, do you have enough space in your hallways, in the entries, in the bathrooms for you to wheel that wheelchair in? All right, so these are all the things that we are asking you to consider, write down and think about. The next item is decluttering. Besides your furniture, do you have 20, 30, 40 years worth of personal items that you have accumulated? Right? If you raised your family, you potentially still have your kids' items that they never took with them when they moved out and moved on with their lives and started their own household, right? And who can help you? If you want to learn more a little bit about how to declutter little by little, we have an excellent workshop as well uh, with the links here to our schedule. You're more than welcome to check it out. But we talk about decluttering, how to tackle it with very, very um, a great plan to help you get this done, all right? And then once we have that assessment in place, we help you create a checklist of the improvements that may be made. And then we help you get three or four contractor estimates. And then you can decide what time of uh, 
framework for the work needs to be done and then how we're going to finance the project. So as you can see, determining what needs to be done takes time. Getting contractor estimates and contractors out there takes time. Uh, the best time to kind of figure these, these things out and get your contractors out to you is in the fall and winter. This is when the contractors are not as busy as the spring and summer uh, markets and when everybody else is busy with uh, the projects. So right now might be one of the best times for you to kind of tackle and get some ideas. Financial considerations. Uh, we have a great worksheet, worksheet for you that we can send you to help you kind of, again, plan and uh, tackle and brainstorm in your notebook. What I'm asking you to do here is review your current income and expenses in your own home right? And considering what this would look like if you were to make a move into a retirement community where most of these things are included and you don't have to worry about it, right? So here are some uh, questions and some thoughts that uh, we're going to ask you. And if you are interested in, ha in, doing, in having this worksheet, worksheet, we're more than happy to send it to you in the mail, okay? Financial considerations as well. Besides thinking about whether you have a mortgage or not, here are some other things that you need to discuss, right? Uh, this, uh, where is your income coming from, right? Do you have savings? Uh, do you have investments? And a lot of these things, when you start pulling the money out, you need to know how this is going to affect you from a uh, taxation standpoint. So it's always important to check with your financial advisor to make sure that you are maximizing your investments for the long, as long as a period of time as possible because you're going to need those finances. Is a reverse mortgage an option for you if you don't have a mortgage right now, right? What's important to know that it's um, for ages 62 and older. And um, we actually just did a great workshop with one of our resource partners who does strictly um, reverse mortgages. I encourage you to head over to my YouTube channel and we're actually going to put, post the link to that workshop so you can go ahead and listen to it where we dive in in depth and I ask uh, Richard questions about who is this a great idea for and who it's not a good idea for, okay? But it's a great option, uh, a great opportunity for you to consider if you are strapped for cash and you definitely want to stay at home. Uh, Medicare and Medicaid, how are these federal programs and state funded programs are going to help you or they're not going to help you? It's critical to know and understand which services are paid for. And also it's critical to understand that whether you are in Pennsylvania or you're in New Jersey, right, or depending what state you're in, especially Medicaid works differently and covers different items, especially if you are thinking about staying at home. And I'm hoping that Charlene can chime in too about that. Health insurance, long-term care insurance, all these things that you need to understand what is covered and what is not. If there's a waiting period for long-term care insurance, uh, your benefit is only potentially valid for a certain period of time. What does that look like in your situation and what else do you need to consider? How else you need to plan? If you have VA benefits or you are a veteran, definitely, definitely find out what are the benefits available to you. A lot of people don't realize that uh, for veterans, there are some great options and co-pays and monthly benefits that are available uh, for, for the veterans and their spouses, monetary assistance, supporting services. So definitely check out or reach out to us so we can connect you with the right resource so that way you can do your research faster. As you can see, there's so much to consider. And again, I just want to reiterate to you that this planning does take time. So the sooner you start doing this, or you making a list of all the things that you need to tackle and do more research and you start checking things off your list, the easier it's going to be for you to make these plans and make your retirement years truly golden where you can enjoy everything that you want to do, maybe traveling, um, contributing in some way to the community, you know, doing something, volunteering or whatever it is that makes you happy. And here's where we go into the health and wellness, right? Does it make sense for you to stay at home if your overall health may not be in the best of shape? And when you actually answer questions in this questionnaire, and we're happy we can send this to you as well, I am encouraging you to be very honest with yourself, right? Because this is you, you take care of yourself the best. You need to be honest with yourself. What is your overall health? What are your concerns? How are your daily activities and do you need help with that? 
right? Means to travel. Do you have some, are you going to be able to take care of yourself and draw yourself to appointments to have social activities or do you need help with that, right? And also make a list and see who is your medical team who's going to help you prepare for your healthcare plan, your doctors, your nurses, someone for personal hair, uh, care, and then your, your nursing care as well. So I know I'm throwing a lot of things at you and I encourage you to use this work workshop notebook as a guide of some of the things that you have to think about when you are planning on staying in your home and you know, staying and aging in aging in place is another power word. Community and social interaction, right? If you are thinking you have access to your friends, what about being part of a community, local community? Uh, there are adult daycares that are available where you can come in, have something to eat, uh, you know, play games with others, have socialize, and then you can come home. Are you able to drive yourself there or do you need transport, okay? Are you comfortable with technology where here we are on Zoom, right, doing these workshops versus face-to-face? Uh, -face? Are you comfortable? Do you know how these things operate so that way you are comfortable making phone calls, maybe having telehealth appointments with your doctors or your nurses, or just as simple as having some face time with your grandkids, right, with your friends and family. Um, what is it that you want to do in terms of community contribution, right? What is it that gives you that fire in your belly? What is your passion, right? Think about your hobbies, maybe something new that you want to learn or you want to give back to your community. Volunteering, you know, professional connections, maybe starting new groups. These are all of the things that are extremely important for you to stay well and healthy mentally and physically when you retire and you enjoy all the things that you want to do. The next critical step is having a, in a very serious and honest conversation with your loved ones. I encourage you to do this face-to-face -face and not through Zoom if it's possible, right? Because you, you definitely want to hold someone's hand, give someone a hug, uh, something of that nature, but communication with your loved ones is critically important. And these are the questions and, and items that I need you to have prepared for this conversation, because I can't tell you how many times the fires were put out. Uh, maybe someone is not able to communicate anymore because they had a stroke, they had a heart attack, and now the family is trying, scrambling and trying to do what's best for their loved one, but they don't know what the loved one wants and needs and that loved one is not able to communicate, okay? So share with them how you're feeling. What do you want your family and your loved ones to know? Do you need help? What are you afraid of? What are your thoughts and desires, right? Where to find your important documents? Do you have your directed? Do you have your power attorney, your will, your list of accounts so that way your family can easily find this information and the financial resources that you have set aside to help and take care of you? Who is going to be in charge, right? Who is, is it gonna be one of your children? Do this, does this child know that they're going to be helping you and be in charge and they're, and they're okay with that, right? Who is your financial team to help you, your attorney, your financial advisor, your accountant? And do we have everyone's information? And also make sure that your team knows who in your family is going to be in charge in case if you are not able to make decisions yourself, right? What are your wishes? What is your financial plan? And what is your health plan? So these are extremely critical questions to ask yourself. And again, this is going to take time to put together. So again, I am encouraging you to start this sooner than later. Um, this, this is something that truly cannot wait. All right, so here's what's next. I'm going to just recap everything and then I'm going to bring Charlene into our conversation. Grab a notebook and write down how are you feeling, what are your plans and your thoughts. My encouragement to you is start now. There is never a bad time. It's, there's always a good time to start something important. Have that meeting with your loved ones as soon as possible. Schedule your free home safety assessment appointment with us. We do this absolutely free of charge. We want to help you and make plans for you as easy as possible and be a resource for you. Okay. If you need copies of these documents that I mentioned at this workshop, your monthly expenses evaluation, digital asset inventory list, room inventory, planning your space, contractor recommendations, please reach out to us. And of course, we have other workshops that we do on a regular basis that are part of our senior series where we provide as much information and value to as possible to help you make the best decisions for yourselves. So I'm going to stop sharing and 
bring Charlene in so that way I can ask you some questions. Hi. Hi, how are you? I am doing great. I want to thank you so much for helping us and participating in us. And you know, um, I've been doing these workshops for the reason of being the resource to the community. However, a lot of this has started as the fact that my parents are aging and I, as a oldest child, want to make sure that they're prepared and we kind of know what the options are. And what I realized is that when I was doing my research is that it is like a bottomless black pit of information. There's, there's so much of it out there. And even though I am pretty good about organizing things, even I found it intimidating. So what I try to do is a little bit every week and bring someone who is a resource in our community who can help us. So today, what I want to ask you, just introduce yourself in your company first, and then we can jump into some of the questions that I have for you. Okay, great. My name is Charlene Charles Barjan, but, and I work for Citadel Home Care. We are a company that does do, that does help um, the elderly aging in home, but we also do the skilled portion. So we do skilled and non-skilled. So if anyone goes into the hospital and they need physical therapy, occupational therapy, a nurse in the home, we do that portion. And we also do the other portion where if they need help bathing, if they need light housekeeping and meal preps, medication reminders, that would go under the non-skilled. And that's usually the private pay option um, and other ways of paying for it. So that's the Dell Home Care. Awesome. So you help people have as much of a normal life at home as possible when they need help, right? Absolutely. Awesome. So let's talk about Let's talk about Medicare and Medicaid, because I get a lot of questions all the time is that if I want to stay at home, do I have options for these programs to help me and pay for some of the care? Is there yes, you do. Way, is there an easy way for you to explain like a general how that works? Okay. So with Medicare and Medicaid, um, it's two different companies. Actually, it's two separate. Mm -hmm. However, with Medicaid, there's something called the waiver program. And in the waiver program, that's what will help pay for care at home. However, the waiver program does not happen right away. You typically get referred by a social worker or even myself um, working with uh, a patient at home who re returned from the hospital who needed physical ther occupational therapy, therapy at home, and you realize that the patient needs additional help. I personally can put in the referral in to start the process for the program. Um, and typically after that starts, they do a phone interview and confirm that the patient, the client needs um, additional help at home and they go through a financial process to, be, to become eligible, eligible for the program. And after they realize the needs, the amount of hours that they need and go through about a month process is not something that happens overnight it does take time then um then you can choose the company you can either go with citadel home care or whatever whatever different company that you already work with that takes waiver or they provide you with a list of companies that you can choose from and they can come in the home okay so let's say that Med medicaid is not an option right mm -hmm. and let's talk about skilled care which is um medical services right medical services and so when the nurse comes in and let's say they need to administer shots or something else does that get covered under medicare or if there's a regular you know retiree insurance medical insurance so with medicare med um anything that is medical mm -hmm. physical therapy med shots is completely 100 percent covered in under medicare Right. So that's not something you should be responsible for when um, when you um, it's going to get a little iffy right now. You can have mm -hmm. Medicare, but then mm -hmm. you have a sub insurance and Medicare is not your primary. You may have a copay, but it's not 100 percent. So but any medical typically is covered under insurance insurance. Got it. So the items that are non skilled care are not covered for insurance. Right. So that's. Those are the ones that are not covered for insurance. However, mm -hmm. because of the waiver program, they can be covered under that. And that's where your insurance comes into play under the Medicaid 
Keystone first, all of those different companies, if it falls under the waiver, it, it will get covered. Okay, so let's say that we do not qualify for Medicaid, right? So take the Medicaid off the table, which means we're all talking about private pay. Right. Are there different prices depending on what needs to be done? So every company is different. But with Citadel okay. Home Care, we have a base fee. Okay. Uh, we have a flat fee. Um, if this is for non-skilled, this is for non-skilled. Right. right. Okay. So we have a flat fee, but we also have the options of taking long-term care insurance. Right. Okay. So that's another way you can pay instead mm -hmm. of private pay. But with okay. long-term care insurance with Citadel, you would start the process with private pay and then we'll submit the long-term care insurance and then you'll get the, um, you will receive the check in the mail. So let's say someone does not have long-term care insurance, right? To them, it's basically whatever the income they have coming in, they have to literally write you guys a check. And let's yes. say they need someone to come in twice a week mm -hmm. to provide, you know, some to help with cooking and, you know, some like housekeeping, maybe doing some laundry. Mm -hmm. What's that? Because I, I know nothing about it. Is this something that gets paid by the hour or is this going to be like a fee per day? Like, how does that work? Well, it depends. If you need right. somebody 24 hours a day, <laughs> there's a, the, so I'm going to start with our hourly. We have a, we have mm -hmm. hourly rates. Um, okay. We start at three hours minimum, minimum, mm -hmm. minimum. And if you need more than, it's just a straight hourly rate. Okay. That's how it is. If you decide um, if, okay, well not you, if the need is greater than a few hours a day, eight hours, if it's, once it hits 24 hours a day, that's when we can actually work with you financially and help bring down the costs hourly. But at the end of the day, it is hourly an hourly rate. So does the hourly rate vary depending on which county you're in or, or is it just set? Oh, it's a set, it's a set rate. For right, the can, you can you share with us what the hourly rate is? Of yes, we are at $25 per hour. $25, okay. Yeah. And <clears throat> if someone needs someone to be at the house from the time the person wakes up until that time, is that going to be still 25, 25 hours? 25 hours. Till what time? Till what time exactly? Let's do 12 hour interval from eight to eight. Yep. yep. It would be, it would be 25 an hour. If it becomes 24 hour care, which would mm -hmm. be two 12 hour shifts, then right. we, we would work with them financially. So they won't pay the exact $25 per hour. Got it. Okay. And does, does that include ability for, let's say that the uh, senior is not able to drive himself anymore? Mm -hmm. they, need, you need, they need help to maybe go to the grocery store or go to um, the doctor, right? If, the, if the, that's the way to do it. Is this something that your, your service offers as well? Yes, ma'am. Um, we, uh, we definitely run errands for the clients. If mm -hmm. we need to take them to doctor's appointments, there are different ways we can take it to take them to the doctor. Uh, we can um, either do Uber or Lyft or, um, or the client um, gets driven by one of our clients. So um, one of our caregivers, it all depends. We, tr we actually uh, put every caregiver appropriate to the client. So their needs, the what the client's needs are, we we choose the proper caregiver for them. Got it. Okay. So basically, whatever is needed, it's going to be an hourly rate. Yeah. But then, if it goes more towards like a twenty-four hour care, then there may be ability to work something out. And right. What else do you think that we need to know that is important that either I haven't addressed or maybe you want to point out as something important to iterate over what I already mentioned? Well, in my what, you, what you mentioned was very, we also take VA benefits. So that's a good thing as well. Awesome. So awesome. That, okay. that's one thing I forgot to mention. So we're a well-rounded company as far as the uh, uh, services that we provide and that we mm -hmm. make. But, um, one thing I want to mention is during the holidays is usually when family members see the differences in their parents. And after spending time with them, they realize they need the help. And um, 
usually um, they can get a they they would get the assessment with our nurse, and mm -hmm. our nurse will, will help them determine how many hours of care they actually need. So they will definitely get assessed. Um, I do believe you you touched every point as far as financial and the need. Um, planning is definitely important um, for elder care, um, and there are many different companies out there that can help you. Um, and I'm, yeah. thank you for having me today and thank you for sharing this information because a lot of people are not aware of it, you know, um, until the need arises. And mm -hmm. so um, you sharing this information to everyone and making it available is a great thing. So thank you, Olga. Awesome, awesome. Uh, anything else that you can think of? Because you kind of covered everything. Like I have a better perspective in my mind because you separated everything by skilled, which is medically necessary, right? Medically needed care versus non-skilled, which is things that we need personally, right? So, okay. personally. so one thing that's a very fine line is medication management. So it falls under skilled. A nurse can administer the medication under skilled. However, when it goes into non-skilled, the family member would have to have all their me medication already in their pillbox, and then it will be handed to them from the caregiver. That's a very fine line. <laughs> it's a very Got fine it. line. So that's the difference between the two when it comes to skilled or um, non-skilled services, um, medical and non-medical services for medication reminders. And um, um, that's another thing that's covered with both. Okay. Is there anything else that I haven't asked you that I should have? Maybe because I just don't know I need to ask. Well, <laughs> another thing is that we actually cover all five counties. So... Okay. So that's something important to you that you should know, you can share as a resource. So if you need anyone in Bucks, Chester, Philadelphia, Delaware County, we okay. cover all five counties. So we can come to you. Awesome. Amazing. And they can also reach out to me anytime um, and I will be able to help them. Okay, I think that's what's important. And what you also said, and from what I understand from speaking to other people is that to get qualified, for Medicaid is a pretty long, lengthy process. It is a process. What are you seeing right now with delays as a process? Like how long does it take to get approved for Medicaid? So I, I'm i gonna give from my personal experience because I recently mm -hmm. submitted a couple of uh, referrals mm -hmm. and the wait time just to get seen over the phone is a process and it takes right. a while then following up and making sure the families are, are actually doing what they need to do is another thing. So it is important for the individual's family or the individual they're capable to get everything as soon as possible. That will delay any delays. That won't delay any of the, it will allow them to be, for it to be a smoother process. But the longer mm -hmm. you wait to provide the information, the longer it would be for you to receive the care. So here's a follow-up question to that. Let's say that it does take a long time, right? But in the meantime, of course, the client needs care, right? Yeah. Most likely the care is being done out of pocket. If they get approved for Medicaid, does Medicaid go retroactive to the date of um, either application or approval? Or is it basically they approve you and they say, well, this is the approval date and this is the first date we're going to start giving you that. Yes, typically, because um, if you bringing a not, if you bringing a company where you're paying out of pocket for, um, so I'm going to use Citadel as well, because we take waiver and we do private pay, I would suggest go with the company that you do know, like Citadel, that it will be an easier transition. You won't have to bring in a new company to come in and help. Um, but it is, you pay out of pocket up front and then once it comes through, but you know, of course, make a rational decision as far as what you can afford financially, you mm -hmm. know, and in the meantime, if family can help whilst, while the company's in there in the hours that they can't be, then, you know, you can help financially, it can help financially, but actually when it starts for the waiver problem is the day that they approve it and then they'll start paying. Got it. And then they pay directly to you for the services provided, right? Right. Got it. All right. Good to know. Well, these are all the questions that I think I had. You answered them very efficient, so I appreciate it. No worries. And uh, Jess, Heather, do you guys have any other questions that maybe I did not ask that are so important? I have a 
don't think so. I think it was all covered. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Well, Charlene, I am going to, we're going to provide all of your contact information where we send out a copy of this recording as well as the workshop booklet. So okay. expecting some phone calls, follow-ups for sure. And then of course, there's a link to the video. But again, I want to thank you for jumping in. I know you're busy during the season uh, and then taking the time out of your busy day to answer some of your questions because I know that it's very much appreciated, not just by us, but also by to the community members that we provide this information to. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. All right. Thank That's you so much, everyone, for joining us. Have a great week and we'll see you in the next workshop. Bye.